All right, Steelers Nation. Just finished up. Uh, let's see, this is day three at the NFL Scouting Combine. And um, it's been a fun experience. I mean, today was the first day we actually got to have the guys on field doing drills. Not just the measurables, height, weight, hand size. We actually got a chance to see some 40 times, some broad jumps, some stuff like that, man. And uh, I'm going to say, man. Feels good to have some tangible information. But um, to start this off, we're gonna do a little two part with this, man. Uh did get a chance to talk to some uh some guys today, man. Um Danny Kelly, uh one of the big draft uh analysts, stuff like that, man. You can check his work out at The Ringer. Um, you know, in terms of just talking with him and some of what he was seeing with some of these tackles, specifically the guy that, you know, he kind of stood out to him the most was uh JC Latham, right? And JC Latham, obviously the big uh the big guy out of uh, Bama. I mean the dudes are straight killer, savage. Like him a lot. Uh I know talking with, you know, just some of the coaches around here, they're very fond of him as well, man. In terms of just that big physicality you could dance with the best of them shoot i just like the fact you watch a big man on tape and he got his day going his his thigh meat showing you know i'm like man when you when you when you wear your pads like little guy pants i'm like whoa okay okay you sending a message but you know going back watching more of him on tape man he stands out in a major way but also i mean when you see him in person he's a big massive individual um, not sure if he lasts the 20. That's my only concern with JC. Like I said, because a lot of people are talking about him out here at Indianapolis, man. And I do think he's one of those guys that will continue to move up the board just because of, like I said, his ability to move in the size he has and how he plays the game. Definitely like him. The other name that keeps coming up around here um, as a potential option for us, because like I said, man, we're looking in that tackle market, right? Whether we're talking right tackle or left tackle, even though I do think it's more of the right tackle element of it. We know, I mean, we know we're going to be in that, you know, in those conversations. The other guy, though, that uh, has, his name keeps popping up a lot around here as well as it pertains to the Steelers and some of the uh, tackle conversations, is uh, Amarius Mims uh, out of Georgia, the uh, right tackle out of there. Now, with Mims, he does not have a ton of tape, but the tape that is out there from him, man, is like just foolish dominant at times man he's just like bro okay well i need to see more but i love what i've been seeing from him and um just when you're thinking about arthur smith's scheme and why those particular guys stand out the most and why they fit what we potentially be trying to do is arthur smith isn't looking to zone scheme you and play that small ball he's trying to beat you off the line of scrimmage and he's trying to manhandle you in those trenches and those guys in terms of jc latham um amarius mems they are more of the physical caliber tackles versus some of the uh you know it's some finesse guys and we don't have an issue with them but just for what we are trying to do i think we are going to lean more towards this power style you know blockers i mean we see that even with a project jones at right tackle but we know it's probably a guy that we're going to be bumping to left since that is where you know we were drafting him for but um with that being the case man jc latham amarius mims those were two of those guys, like I said, whose names keep coming up. Um, some of the analysts around here, they keep talking about them a lot. And just when you watch them, they do fit potentially what we're trying to do. Now, with Mims, I think that's a legitimate conversation in terms of drafting him. With Latham, I think that is more the convo of do you move up or is there some magical way where he slides a little bit? Because I don't think he's going to remain <clears throat> a secret um, too much longer in terms of just not even a secret, but in terms of just keeping him out of that top 10, top 15 part of the draft those are the conversations right but that's just like i said the old line part of it salute those dudes now on the defensive side because we did like i said get some guys running today y'all know i got my laundry list of linebackers you know i like them a lot um some of the guys though that i've been already watching that i think potentially could come and help us out but also that i think uh like i said just are good players um edrin cooper Right, Texas A&M uh, linebacker, Nathaniel Watson out of Mississippi State, like him, Peyton Wilson, also a cat, NC State, really productive player, Cedric Gray, one of those guys, you know, in terms of just production, fits today's off-ball linebacker, 
element of it. Easton Gibbs, shout out the Let's Go You Dubs. Shout out to your Wyoming guy. But yeah, Easton Gibbs is another guy I was checking out. And then Junior Colson. Um, those are some of the guys, like I said, whose names, um, and based on watching the tape, I like them a lot. I think that they do help um, and can fit what we're trying to do. But um, in terms of them running and testing today, that was the interesting part, right? Because we did get more info. <clears throat> Whether you're talking, uh, you know, in terms of the fast guys, well, we know Peyton Wilson, he was the fastest, right? He had the 4 4 3, like him a ton. I do feel like if he was one of those guys who didn't have so much medical issues, he's a first rounder. Whether you're talking the talent, whether you're talking the production, whether you're talking the speed, the big issue with him is, is his body going to hold up? Because, like I said, he's been through a lot of injuries at the knees and shoulder position, and it's just it makes you a little bit more hesitant when you're thinking about, you know, him specifically. Um, the guy that, like I said, has jumped off uh, the screen to me multiple times watching him on tape, but really is a guy who, you know, a lot of the analysts out here like a lot is Edron Cooper um, out of Texas a and I mean, he's a C-ball, get-ball guy. He can fly around, long frame and stuff like that. Obviously ran the four five one. That helps him out in a major way, man. I, I was excited to see that. Um, Another guy, though, that uh, <clears throat> to me, I'm excited about personally, my man uh, Nathaniel Watson, man. I thought that uh, he was productive. The senior bowl was very productive in the SEC at Mississippi State. And, um, you know, he went out there, ran 4 6 3. And we're talking this laser time. That's, that's good speed to me, man. Um, now, granted, none of these guys that we're talking about are sure, you know, fire first rounders. And I don't think any of these guys go in the first round. I think we're talking day two, uh, second round, third round type guys. But to me, man, these are some of those names that could potentially help us out. Easton Gibbs, I was I was a little disappointed with the 4.73, but at the same time, I think he plays faster than that time. I think he's one of those guys that in terms of uh, having good eyes, understanding uh where teams are trying to attack him, understanding the strengths and weaknesses of the defenses. I like that part. And that's the part where, you know, what I look at, what these scouts look at, what these coaches, GMs, and stuff look at. It's all this mix of combine does matter. You run fast here, it does help. But if I'm watching you on tape and you can get to the ball and you're doing all these other intangible things right and you're doing everything that I need to see you be in terms of being a productive player, we're not going to hold this combine performance as gospel over the tape. And that's the one thing that, you know, as the combine continues to go on and we're going to get excited about certain guys, we're going to look at other guys and say they're losers and stuff like that because they might not test the best. We can't lose sight of when we cut that tape on. What does that tape tell us? And those are the parts, like I said, that makes this such a unique experience when you're watching them and evaluating them. But at the same time, this is also why you know, it does matter. But even though that film does matter as well, we kind of got to use all of it together because yeah, you want to see if a guy's fast or not, because this is a speed league and it's spaced out even more so at the NFL level compared to college. But if a guy's just a great athlete, but he's not productive, he doesn't have good eyes. It doesn't matter because that same four, six or that same four, four guy might as well be a four, six guy. If he doesn't know what he's looking at, because it's going to take him, you know, that much longer to actually go the right direction and see the right things. Whereas some of these guys that necessarily aren't quote unquote blazers, I personally feel like they're very productive because of their eyes, because of their feel for run fits, because of their, you know, just studying above the net game. So that's going to be the interesting part. But you guys let me know your thoughts, though, on some of those linebackers that I named. Um, obviously, I talked about the two tackles as well. Um, Junior Colson is a guy that I'm really intrigued about, really excited about, was super productive at Michigan, not testing, right? Did not run out here. So can't, you know, determine how fast or not fast. But he's another one of those guys to me, man, that uh, that that keep your mind. I mean, keep a... Uh, you know, just keep your your, your your mind on them potentially, man, as we're looking at this inside linebacker, off-ball linebacker thing, man. Um, we'll see what we do in free agency with it. But I do think these are legitimate players that we should, you know, just be a little bit more cognizant of. But you guys let me know your thoughts on those guys I named and uh, if any of them stand out to you in the comment section. And if not, if you got somebody else, drop that too. But whatever you do, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I'm going to take my credentials. And I'm going to call it a night. As you can see, it's a late one. But it was a blast today. And until next time, baby. Peace.